Can probiotic bacteria improve muscle mass and physical function? In the last video, we saw that isolation followed by transplantation of L. plantarum from the poop of Olympic weightlifter Sing Chung Kuo increased muscle mass and physical function in young mice. Now, a different strain of L. plantarum is also present in Taiwanese pickled cabbage, which then raises a couple of questions. Can fermented cabbage derived L. plantarum similarly impact muscle in young mice, but also in aged? And also, can fermented cabbage derived L. plantarum impact muscle in people, and more specifically in randomized control trials or RCTs? So to address that, first let's have a look at the data in young mice where uh, L. plantarum was isolated from Taiwanese pickled cabbage and then transplanted into both young and aged mice, and this was an eight-week study. So did a non-poop-derived L. plantarum strain improve muscle strength? So that's what we can see here. Grip strength on the y-axis plotted against time. So week zero will be baseline before transplantation of L. plantarum, and then weeks four and eight are four and eight weeks after transplantation into both young and old mice. So starting with the data at baseline, we can see that there are four groups. Y control, as shown there in purple. So young control, young TWK10, that's the strain of L. plantarum isolated from Taiwanese pickled cabbage that was used. Uh, A control, which are the aged mice controls, not supplemented. And then aged TWK10, aged mice supplemented with, uh, or that were going to be supplemented with L. plantarum. Now, before even looking at these supplemented versus non-supplemented, non-supplemented data as a function of time, we can see that aged mice have a worse grip strength or worse muscle strength when compared with young. And this isn't any, any big news. Uh, this just demonstrates the age-related decline for muscle strength, which is well, uh, well documented in many studies. So what was the effect of L. plantarum at four and eight weeks after starting supplementation? So uh, for both young and uh, aged mice, both at the four and eight week time point, we can see an improvement for grip strength in the L. plantarum supplemented mice. So clearly we can see that muscle strength was improved in both young and aged mice. So what about muscle mass? So here we're looking at relative muscle weight, which is muscle mass divided by body weight for both young and aged mice. And then we've got two groups, control and the L. plantarum group, TWK10. But unlike the data for grip strength, here we see that uh, L. plantarum did not affect relative muscle weight or muscle mass divided by body weight in either young or aged mice. So together from this study, we can see that there was improved muscle strength, but not muscle mass in L. plantarum supplemented young and aged mice. So does L. plantarum supplementation improve muscle mass and or physical function in people? So to address that, first we're going to have a look at this study, and all the studies referenced in this video will be in the video's description, so if you're interested in that, check it out. So in this study, they looked at the effect of L. plantarum supplementation in healthy humans. So let's just define that more appropriately so we can see whom these data may generally apply. So in this study, it included both men and women with relatively small amounts of men and women within each group. So you can see that within each of these three groups, uh, there were nine subjects per group, both men and women. So 18 in the placebo, 18 people in the low dose, and 18 people in the high dose of L. plantarum supplementation. So in terms of how much the actual supplementation was in the L. plantarum groups, you can see that for the 1x group, it was three times 10 to the 10 colony forming units, CFUs, of L. plantarum per day. And for the 3x group, it was nine times 10 to the 10th. And note that these are both higher doses uh, for the human study relative to the mouse studies. So then in terms of age, these were young adults. Uh, as you can see by the average ages within each group, they were uh, within the 21 to 23 year old range. In terms of BMI, the, the, these subjects were already relatively lean, which is a, uh, defined as a BMI less than 25 kilograms per meter squared for all of the groups, except for the 3X uh, L. plantarum group, as you can see by their red arrow. And then uh, in terms of cardiovascular fitness, all of these subjects were relatively cardiovascular fit, as indicated by VO2 max. For the men, we can see that they had average values approaching 50, and for women, we can see average values around 45. So what was the effect of L. plantarum supplementation for six weeks on muscle mass and function? So first, let's start with the muscle mass change or muscle weight change, as shown here. And then uh, muscle, muscle mass was measured by BIA, or bioelectric impedance analysis, as shown with the device there. That's the actual device that they used. And then in terms of we've, our, our three groups, placebo, low, and high-dose L. plantarum, we can see that muscle weight was increased, significantly increased, 
only for the highest dose of l plantarum as shown by the green arrow. Now note that BIA also measures fat mass. And interestingly, body fat percentage or BF percentage was also impacted, which is what we can see here. So the body fat change percentage on the y-axis plotted against our three groups. And once again, we can see an alteration for uh, body composition, more specifically the percent body fat change for the highest dose of l plantarum, which there was a reduction for the body fat percentage in the highest dose of l plantarum supplementation. So from these two uh, figures, we can see that there was increased lean mass uh, as, a, as a measure of muscle mass, a decreased percentage of body fat in young people supplemented with l plantarum. Now, it's important to note or ask the question, are these data confounded by weight loss or diet changes? Because if you lose weight, one would expect a reduction in the percentage of body fat, or if you alter your diet, uh, it's possible to see changes in the amount of muscle mass. So without showing the data, uh, but actually just saying what, what they showed, uh, calorie, protein, fat, and carb intake were not different when compared with baseline for any of the three groups. And also body weight was not different when, when compared with baseline, again, for any of the three groups, placebo or the low or high dose l plantarum groups, which then highlights a potential role for l plantarum on increasing muscle mass and decreasing the percentage of body fat in the young adults of this study. So what about physical function? So for that, in this study, they looked at uh, treadmill exhaustion time, so a run to exhaustion test on the treadmill. And first, looking at the data for, for placebo, we can see that that was not different when compared with base, baseline. But then we can see for both the low and high dose L plantarum supplemented groups, the treadmill exhaustion time or run to exhaustion time was significantly longer for both supplemented groups. So we can see that aerobic exercise capacity is improved in young adults supplemented with L plantarum. Now, just as a brief summary, because we're about to jump into even more data, in terms of uh, L plantarum supplementation in young adults, they had an increase in muscle mass and aerobic exercise capacity and a reduction for the percentage of body fat. So uh, studies in young adults are nice. What about studies in older adults? Does L plantarum supplementation impact muscle mass and or physical function in older adults? So for that, we'll have a look at this study, which looked at uh, frail older adults. So let's just define that a little bit more clearly because when I hear frail old, older adults, I think of a severe phenotype. So let's see if that was actually true or not. So first we've got our three groups again, placebo and then low and high dose of L plantarum. Uh, for the low dose L plantarum, we can see that that was two times 10 to the 10th colony forming units. And for the high dose L plantarum, that was six times 10 to the 10th colony forming units. Now note that both of these doses that were used in this study in older adults were lower than what was used in the study that I just showed for younger adults. So the low dose was actually 50% lower than what was used in the earlier study. And for the high dose, that's 33% lower than, when you, than, than what was used for the study in young adults. In terms of age, this study included uh, people with average ages within each group, uh, within the 75 to about 81 year old range. And then we can see a frail, uh, frailty score. Uh, so uh, about three, for a frailty score for each of these three groups. So what does that actually mean? What are we looking at here? So in this study, they used a clinical frailty scale and people with a clinical frailty scale score between one to four were included. So we can see that one would be very fit, four would be vulnerable. Now, the average frailty score in this study was about three, which means that on average, the subjects in the study were managing well. So people whose medical problems were well controlled, but were not regularly active between uh, beyond routine walking. In, in other words, sedentary, but uh, with adequate control of their medical problems. So did L plantarum supplementation for 18 weeks? So this was a longer study too, relative to, relative to the, younger, uh, the younger adult study that used L plantarum supplementation. Did that improve muscle mass and physical function in these older adults? So let's start with muscle mass on the y-axis, and then we've got our three groups again, young, uh, sorry, placebo, low and high dose of L plantarum on the X. And then we've got four time points that muscle mass was assessed. So baseline, six weeks, 12 weeks, and 18 weeks after uh, starting L plantarum supplementation. So first, low dose L plantarum did not affect the amount of muscle mass, but then we can see small but significant increases for each of the high dose L plantarum groups at each of the time points, six, 12, and 18 weeks, when compared with baseline, about a 1% to 3% increase for muscle mass. Now, muscle mass can go uh, correspondingly go with an increase in body weight, so you don't necessarily improve body composition if, if that's the case. So to address that, the authors of the study looked at relative muscle weight or the relative muscle weight percentage, which is the muscle mass divided by body weight times a 100. 
And when doing that, once again, we see that the low-dose L plantarum group was not significant in terms of the change in the relative muscle weight percentage, but there was one time point where it was significant for the high-dose L plantarum supplemented group, about a 3% increase and only at 18 weeks. So we can see that the 6 and 12 week changes for only looking at muscle mass now are not significant when accounting for body weight uh, using the relative muscle weight percentage. So together from these two figures, we can see a small but significant increase for muscle mass in L plantarum, more specifically the high dose only supplemented older adults. Now, also note that unlike the randomized control trial in young people, the body fat percentage was not different for any of the L plantarum supplemented groups, both the low and high dose in older adults. So what was the effect of L plantarum supplementation on physical function? So for that, I'm going to show uh, four functional measures. First, we'll, we'll start with grip strength. We've got data for the right hand and then data for the left hand. So starting with the data for the right hand, we can see that grip strength was not significantly increased in either of the L plantarum groups. And then when looking at the left hand, we can see that the low dose group did not have a significant improvement for grip strength, but at 18 weeks, there was a 13% significant increase for grip strength for the highest L plantarum supplemented group. Now, I find this data a little bit curious. How can you improve grip, grip strength in one hand, but not the other? I'd expect it to be uh, in both hands or, or none. So uh, I find this data maybe a little bit suspect, but nonetheless, the study reported increased muscle strength only for the left hand in, in the high dose L plantarum supplemented older adults. So what about lower body strength and or endurance? Did L plantarum supplementation impact those measures? So in terms of lower body strength slash endurance, they used a 30 second chair stand test, which basically is how many chair stands can you do uh, from standing or from sitting down to standing up and then sitting back down again in 30 seconds. So we've got our three groups, low uh, placebo, low and high dose L plantarum. And then here we can see that at both 12 weeks and 18 weeks, L plantarum supplementation or the number of chair stands at 12 and 18 weeks was significantly increased for both low and high dose L plantarum. So what about measures of mobility, balance and or gait? So for that, we'll take a look at two different measures. First, starting with the three meter timed up and go. In that test, that's where you stand up from a chair, walk three meters, and then sit back down, and abbreviated, it's the three meter 3M TUG. So first, we can see that placebo got significantly worse at performing this test over each of the time points, so six, 12, and 18 weeks after the baseline visit. And then there was no effect for the three meter timed up and go for the low dose supplemented group, but then there was a significant improvement at 18 weeks for a faster three meter timed up and go for the high dose L plantarum group. So what about the 10 meter walk test? So how fast are you able to walk 10 meters? And once again, we can see that placebo got worse over the course of the 18 week study, whereas the low dose, uh, low dose L plantarum supplemented group had a faster 10 meter walk again at the 18, uh, 18 week time point. But interestingly, high dose L plantarum did not see an improvement for this test. So if L plantarum was, uh, maybe there's a sweet spot of supplementation or, um, Maybe it's not a real effect, I don't know, but they did see a, a significant difference for at least for the low uh, L plantarum supplemented group for the 10 meter walk test in this study. All right, so we just went through a lot of data. Let's just summarize it, including the data from the last video. So first, L plantarum transplantation from an Olympic weightlifter improved muscle mass and physical function in young mice. And that was, again, in the, in the last video. And then for the three studies in this video, uh, using uh, L plantarum isolated from fermented cabbage, First data in mice, both young and old, we saw improved muscle strength, but not muscle mass. And then when looking at the two RCTs, first in young adults, there was an increase for muscle mass and aerobic exercise capacity. And for the study in older adults, there were small but significant improvements for muscle mass and physical function. So that's all for now. Uh, if you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And uh, before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking with chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. And we've also got merch that you may be interested in, and all of the links for these things will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.